doesn't look quite right. doesn't go to the end for some reason. I really hate this theming stuff, it's really annoying. Okay, I guess I have to do that. It still doesn't look right when it's in here. Why? looks worse. That's fine. Right. Um, okay, the thing that I'm doing is I'm. Um, whoops. Oops. I am. Um, uh, just co gonna copy Renoise. If you have a plugin with a lot of parameters, then it 
arranges them like this. Which is okay. Probably in the future I'll think of some other way to do it, but this is like a fast way of just getting something working. So I think I'm going to have to do a bunch of custom layout coding to get this to work right because the problem is I want these labels, I, th I want the sliders to line up regardless of the length of the label name. So that's what's happening here because I have this grid container and that's the way the grid container works is these the things in the in the right hand column would always line up but that means that if I just decide that I can fit like four rows that means that for, if I want more than four then I just have to keep like dynamically adding more uh, grid containers and then arrange them like this for example because there's another thing in Godot called um, a flow container. Oh, or the label could go above. I didn't think of that. Maybe that's nicer actually. That's probably better. But anyway, the thing that the the flow container does is basically this. Which is nice as long as I don't as long as we don't end up with that situation. So maybe I just group these elements together. And the way we do that is a V-Box. What I could do actually is do something like display the value here like it would be something like 99% or whatever. Um, and so, oops. And 
so this of how this sort of how that will look but I'll add more spacing obviously um so what happens now if I change the length of these names is everything is it all cool it all just reacts which is nice um so there would be CV flow container. So we do this. We get away with smushing them together quite a lot. <clears throat> uh, one of the problems with this is the size of the this value label will change. Um, which will make everything move around while dragging the sliders. Might go from one to a thousand percent, for example. Um, so that's not good. How can I prevent that? Um, how can I prevent that from happening? I just, I just want this to... Do it like this, right? There we go. That's good. Uh, so then the sliders are always a set width as well. So each of these and set on click text and this. And then I'll make make the sliders a little bit wider by going. This actually looks okay. Um I was thinking I would just set something up very... I, I was planning to just do something very temporary, but this is actually <laughs> actually turning out to be quite nice. Just mainly because of um, the, this automatic layout that I can, that I can do just using the Godot, this flow, flow container thing. One thing I wonder about is <clears throat> whether the font is going to affect things a bit here. Oh, that's it. Hold on, let me let me just uh, let me do something here. If this is at an awkward height, so it's got a bit of padding at the bottom, then we can center it. I think by going shrink center. Nope, definitely not. Uh, what would it be? Expand, fill, shrink. Hmm. It's not going to be this, is it?
Mm, that's unfortunate. It kind of makes sense because of the way that what the flow container does, but you can't actually. I can't. I don't think I can center that easily. Vertically. If I could, it would be this shrink center, but that's what that does. Some of the fonts in Blockhead are different heights, so with this font there's three rows. If I switch to a different font, okay. Man, it would be really nice to be able to center it. Really, really nice to be able to center this vertically. I don't, I don't think that's possible with this type of container. Which is kind of sad. furious <laughs> why why can't I censor it it's <laughs> damn that would be so nice to be able to do that there must be a way There's not going to be anything. <gasps> this guy. Climb options. What? It's just, okay, hold on a second. What? What are you on about? One second, let me, let me look at this YouTube video. That. 
There should be an alignment property here, but there isn't. This was merged into Godot two years ago. Oh, this is only H flow container. No, I don't have that one either. What? So confused. I have a really recent um, version of Godot that I'm using, Godot 3, so it should have that PR merged. I'm just not seeing the property in the inspector. Uh, flow container. doesn't exist. <laughs> this is good if I agree. Here's the good three version. It says it's merged into Godot 3. Ah, 3.x. Oh god, okay. <clears throat> so I'm using this branch here, 3.5, but this feature was merged into 3.x. Uh, So, I'm using a, uh, a custom version of Godot now, because I needed to add my own changes. So how can I... I think I could drag these into a different branch, right? But I need to, I need to get it somehow. How do I do that? Uh, I don't know. Oh, this one. Can I do this? Is that gonna fuck everything up? Except Ah, oh, they call it six O because it's Wait what? <laughs> Three point six, yeah. I hope I'm doing the right thing here. Okay, so I'm now on 3.x. So I'll push that to my GitHub. Uh, 
So now I have to rebuild Godot. I remember how to do that, <laughs> but it's uh, gonna be Oh wait, I'm, I should. I don't need a debug version. I want a release version. do anything else while this is building. It's the only thing that I want to do. what I was looking for.
smaller for some reason. Oh, there should be go. See if it works. I'm gonna have to close and reopen. In fact, what is this even pointing at? I need this one instead. Can't do that. Looks slightly different. Let me just check things work. Seem to be. should now have alignment. Whoa, yes, fantastic. Thank you, Godot community. Be a bit more spacing, shouldn't there? Maybe less spacing between the label and the slider as well. It's going to do that. <laughs> hmm. Which is okay, I guess. It's not brilliant. Ah, they didn't implement it the way I like. <laughs> I guess I could change it myself. Since I'm using a forked version of Godot now. Uh, why would they do it like that? Come on now.
I'm getting really bogged down into the nonsense here. Uh, I can I can do that some other time. I'll just live with this for now. Um, Okay, uh, just add a little bit of a margin, I think. And I need to make it scroll if there's too many. doesn't work the way I like. Oh, this is annoying actually. Um, what's a dead zone? Dead zone. What is that? There's no description for the property. That's really helpful. What's a dead zone? I don't know what that is. Dead zone. Looking at source code. <laughs> what is a dead zone? Uh, scroll container. Dead zone. anything related to what I want. Um, so the problem I have with this score container is is I want to add a margin at the top and the bottom like this, for example. Uh, 
Um, and then if the scroll bar needs to appear at the bottom, it will just use that space that I've already created, but that's not what's going to happen here. That is not what's going to happen. If I put this in here, and set this to this. Instead, this happens where it will it will nudge everything to make room for the scroll bar, which is not what I want to happen. So unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to code the uh, the scroll bar myself by adding one of these because I don't know how to make it. I, I just don't think that sc the scroll container can do that. I don't, I don't think it can do what I want it to do. So when the scroll bar is visible, it'll be like that, and when it's not, I will make this thing visible just to nudge everything back to where it should be. <coughs> and then I have to do all the custom coding for the scroll bar, which is annoying because it's, <laughs> it's really, really confusing. I've done it before, and it was not easy. To remember what the whole page means. All right, let's get on with it. So, oh yeah, uh, yeah. So I need to make a. A scene for this thing. Whoops, I did not need to do that. <clears throat> this is <coughs> what should I call this? Parameter slider. It's too generic, I think. Rack parameter slider. Parameter slider. Device parameter. Mm. 
Ça me plaît. This is gonna look something like this. Good. If there's no parameters, then the button to open this shouldn't exist, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. I'm slowly waking up now. Call it param instead of parameter because it's easier to type. Thank 
Oh, I closed beef text. I need to be able to instantiate this dynamically, so I add it to here. Um, make is rerunning because it's going to generate this thing for me. Okay. Uh, up device params. Just stuff here, so set and to name.
I guess. Um. I don't think clap prescribes anything about um, the range of these parameters. They could just be, it's, it's just any linear range, I think. So it's up to the host how it wants to present things. Mm hmm. I'll just leave it at zero to one hundred. But I'll, 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 try, I'll create a strong type here so that. Um, value. No, that wouldn't really help, will it? Yeah. Let's just put it in the parameter name, I guess. Rain outside, frozen tower. Zero to one hundred. I don't know if this is going to generate a signal because um, some other Godot controls usually they'll have a set value and then they'll have another function called set value no signal to set the value without emitting a signal. Uh, I don't know if I don't know if calling this function is going to emit a signal or not. This is not. I guess I, again, I could just check, check in the code. I'm in the wrong place. Each slider. Nope. Slider dot cpp. There it is. Set value. <clears throat> so it's just whatever this does. There is a set value, no signal. Oh, but maybe it's just not exposed to GD native. Sad. Um, I don't think I have to worry about it. It's doing this check anyway. All right, whatever. Um, I'll just ignore that.
Okay. Uh, hmm. What do we do here? I think how I I want to organ uh, how I want to um, store these all these uh, sliders that I'm going to create. How I want to organize things in the code. Uh, if I decide if this is a stupid idea. Um, so average number of parameters for a plugin, I don't know. Maybe it's like 20. <laughs> um, no, it shouldn't be the average really, it should, it should be like average maximum let's just put 50 okay uh, so Parameters have IDs, I think. Clap ID like that. Doing it like this allows me to reuse the controls. Uh, I 
I might. This is. I'm possibly just trying to be too clever about this, but. I might decide I don't like this. Um, okay. I oh know this doesn't make sense because this zero initializes things. Uh, as soon as I do the arrays. But I can just go set. avoid like needlessly freeing these controls and then recreating them. I can just keep them around in this table and then reuse them. Kind of stupid though. I think I'm gonna add update this to 
to add without recessing. <coughs> so I just don't call that. That's cool. So when you erase things from this data structure using this then it will actually automatically zero initialize things or zero assign um, but in this case I don't want to do that because I want to reuse these controls that I'm making so it's just sort of marking it as erased I don't even need to do that, right? Uh, I suppose I do. Okay. I suppose I should just return this data structure instead. Which 
means I need to include this. I need Thank you. 
All right, now we do interesting things. Um, so I'm going to go set value. Okay, set. Oh, what's the value? Uh, index ID oh, that should be here I need to convert that to <laughs> zero to hundred. Uh, hello, what's all this done? What's Copilot done for me here? Is that correct? Uh, Prem value. Yes, it is. Wait, what? Okay, yeah, that is right. I think that this should be min value and max value. Text that mean value text Okay, cool. Be this. <coughs> we should also hide. the old parameters. implement these functions
a double. It's actually a double. Okay. Let's return to Boolean. A sensible hundred. Okay, that's ridiculous. Fifty. <laughs> Still ridiculous, but whatever. So if that fails, then I'm just going to use Godot's conversion, which is like real, non-real. Otherwise, we do that. That's a double now. Are these all doubles, it's all doubles, okay. It didn't crash, but it didn't do anything good either. I'm not sure what it did there, actually. Let's, uh... <laughs> not sure what's going on. So I'm add oh I'm adding these to the wrong place, that's why. Ooh Okay. And it doesn't scroll yet, because I haven't sorted that out. weird. Uh, 
That's just because it's going off the edge, isn't it? Which breaks the layout temporarily, okay. Um, so, this all looks correct so far. I can use the keyboard as well to modify these. <clears throat> right, let's get the scrolling working. Let's just get that out of the way. This is going to be tedious to figure out, but... So... Uh, how do I do it? So... It's gonna be... The following. Create a control. Like this. Program scroll area. And then I do that. And then I set clip content. So is this going to be omitted when it finishes sorting the children? I assume so. Oh, uh, I don't know if this is actually going to work. Hold on. I add a bunch of these now. What's going to happen exactly? I'm not sure what's going on there. Or is it over to the right? Right, I see. So that's not going, that's not being, okay. Uh, let me think, let me think, 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 think. Um, what am I supposed to do here? Set it to full wrecked. And then what happens? Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I can basically detect... I think if I look out for minimum size change on this node and then resized on the parent and just react to those events and then just check if the minimum width is greater than the parent then show the scroll bar. This is not going to work actually. I need to do something because I need to pos manually position it as well. So I can't use margins like this. That doesn't make sense. It should basically be. Ah, I don't know. This is weird actually. 
okay, hold on. I could basically just say it top left. Okay, I think that makes sense. Oh, but then it's not being centered. Ah, it's not being centered. I would have to manually position it, I think. Do this and then when more are added. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. I'd have to just keep manually positioning it. Like that. So I can't use any anchors or margins. Just set it like that and then do things manually. Okay, that should be fine. I just have to write a bunch of code, but it's, I don't think it's that bad. So I need to react to on param container min size changed and Area and param scroll area resized. That's interesting that it got this <laughs> line correct somehow. Uh, if min size width is hold on. I need to set the height. Oh, this is weird. I don't. I, I don't know how the flow container works when it comes to 
the minimum width and stuff like that. Because I'm, go I'm going to need to set the height as well. Okay, hold on. When this school area resizes, then... I at least need to set the height to mat the height of this container to match it. And then the flow container will do its thing. instead.
stone. Okay, otherwise we center it. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So. Oh, right. I don't know what's going to happen here. I'm sure it's not correct. Okay. I don't know yet. No, I want one with uh, less. No. Oh, <laughs> whoops. I still have uh, all this crap in there. That's confusing me. Okay, so it's not centering it. It should be getting to this point, but it looks like it's not. Is it doing this at all? It's not even doing that. Okay. Oh, I didn't um, connect any of these signals. Dur okay. should it overflow okay 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 Thank you. 
I didn't press control S to save it, okay. Aha! Score bar. Okay. Yes. Yes. So I have a score bar visible now, but it doesn't do anything. So let's try to set up this score bar. Oh, also, this looks weird now. I guess I can stand to make that smaller. I guess. Actually, why is this? This looks like it's got a massive margin. So just because I've zoomed in, no? Oh, that's because that's visible, right? I see. Let's give this a bigger. Let's add five pixels at the bottom and then like that. I think this might get copyright struck <laughs> on YouTube. Uh, okay, that looks fine. There's a lot of wasted space now though. I 
think what I'd need to do is instead of trying to cover up the the border using a block of colour here in this thing. Um, I should put that on the on this panel instead and align it to the correct thing. Because then I can put it behind the scroll bar, which is all I actually I'm trying to achieve here. I'm just, I just don't want it to cover up the scroll bar. And then I can make the scroll bar like flush to the edge as well. If I want to. Do I want to do that? Not really. This is 12 pixels high. Shouldn't this be 12 then as well? Yeah, it should be. fine. Again, it's only two rows now though. Should be using the vertical space more. And maybe it's I mean it's it's the fact that I've got this massive margin at the top to try to match the the scroll bar. I can also remove the spacing between these elements. 
What was that? That might help. Ah, that looks okay. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Figure out the score well stuff then. Um, so the setting up the scroll bar is really confusing. I don't. I still don't understand it. I've done it before. There's a bunch of stuff that you have to set. Page and step. No page. Page is the confusing property. I think. Scroll bar's length is its size multiplied by page over the difference between min and max. What does that mean? <laughs> Size multiplied by page. I don't understand why I have to fucking set that myself. Why can't? What? <laughs> oh right, cause... Mm, okay, so... <sighs> Page. Hold on. I think I've done this before. Let's try and find it. Here it is. Ah, here we go, right. So this is the amount by which it overflows, and I, s I set the max. Right, 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 right. This looks interesting. Right. Set page to the scroll area size width. and then set max to that plus the amount of overflow Is that it? I don't understand it, but that's apparently what I did before. That's, at one point I must have understood it. <laughs> to actually figure out that code. Okay, that looks fine. So this is not going to do anything yet. Sort it out. Um, scroll bar changed. So you changed. Okay.
all the Let's see what Copilot does here. Maybe that's right. That seems okay actually. Not bad. That's quite nice, I think. I need to like highlight, make this color a bit different um, when it's selected. Maybe a bit brighter. Yeah, let's do that now. This color, the color of this panel. And this panel. Is this the same? style as this? No, I don't think so. Two twenty four twenty six. Okay. Oops. Oh, my God, it's so annoying. Why does it do that? So confused now. Uh, set set params button pressed. Here we go.
Tu jardim dos deuses mais uma vez Em busca do prazer Desapareceu depois que eu voltei. 1792. Do perfume do jardim. Okay. And then I set the panel to the same. As this. Na lembrança do que passou, vou that. encontrar o amor aqui mesmo. E se um dia eu voltar ao jardim dos deuses, uma vez mais. Whoops. Oh, I put it in the wrong <laughs> function. Also, oh, I don't really like that color. this twenty two twenty five twenty eight
Why doesn't that work? I don't know why that doesn't work, that's really weird. see it changing the colour but it doesn't have any effect. Whoa! What just happened? That was exciting. Mm. I've never opened that the editor before for that plugin. I think it's setting some OpenGL state in the wrong context or something, I don't know. Why is it not setting this colour? This just always break everything. Yeah. That plugin seems to be misbehaving. So I guess when the time comes, I will contact the developer and see if I can figure out what. See if we can figure out what's going on there. Uh, I don't understand why this colour isn't working. Get Starbucks. Is it because I need to go... I mean, I can see it's getting a pointer back, so it should be the right one. Oh, no, that's a null pointer. Oh, what am I doing wrong? Oh, because I need to set the colour for this one as well, right. Actually, I don't need, ah, I don't need to do anything. All I need to do... I get it, I get it, I get it. I could just do that, and then it will look right. Brilliant, okay. So I can remove all of this. Ha <laughs> ha. 
no. What? Oh, I didn't save it. Fuck. See how this looks. I think. This one breaks everything, apparently. When you close the window. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not doing so. It's definitely not behaving. It's messing up all my textures. Just, just trying to think what could be happening there. Uh, Well, it seems like the plugin is um, it's doing OpenGL calls after the window is closed and assuming that it still has the correct context bound. I think that that's maybe that's what's going on. I don't know. of this uh, I can find out I copy this to here temporarily This is like the uh, plugin framework, so there might be other plugins that have that problem. Uh, let's see. I think some of these other ones were made using the same framework. That one, for example.
Where did I get that from? Why is there no link to the website? No. There. I've forgotten the name of it now. I have a bunch of the plugins that were made using this plugin framework, but not all of them are. Not all of them show this problem, it seems. Oh, I add M verb and it adds 3 band EQ for some reason. Weird. This one, for example, that has the same problem. This one doesn't. This one. What? <laughs> I don't know if that's a bug on my end or what. I tried looking at this framework before and it was really fucking confusing the way it was written. I don't know, I'm going to have to use some kind of um, OpenGL tracing to find out what's going on at some point. Until then, I'm just going to make note of plugins that are known to <laughs> fuck up the graphics completely. It won't actually be a problem at all once I implement um, plug-in sandboxing. Because then everything will be in a different process anyway. Uh, so where are we up to now? Maybe they, these sliders should be wider to make room for these names. And 
Um, obviously I need to do something when the sliders are modified. So let's first of all... Let's make this 200. Um, okay. Slider changed. Value oh, changed.
This is not necessary actually. Uh, no, instead I should just pass this here. Or should I? No, I shouldn't. Change my mind again. Function to do that already. It's called an inverse lap.
Okay, let's see if that works. How do you set the value? It looks like you have to do it using events, maybe? Send parameter events in the audio thread, I guess. Interesting. This one doesn't work. What? 
Oh, I should <laughs> don't do inverse lerp. What are you doing? There we go. Things are working correct now. So it's not actually changing the plugin in any way, but the sliders seem to be working. At least. Alright, it's a good start. Uh, yeah, this problem, I have no idea. <laughs> it's really... I'm going to have to look at some kind of OpenGL trace to see what's happening there. Um, but maybe I just won't <sighs> investigate that at all. Maybe I'll just leave it as a known issue because eventually I'm going to do plugin sandboxing, which means all the plugins will be in a different process anyway. So there won't be any interference with... Um, like I, I, can, I know generally what the issue is here, and it's... The plugin is implemented using OpenGL and the host is also implemented using OpenGL and probably what's going on is the, the wrong context is bound at some point. Um, it's probably... It, it's, well, I have a forked version of Godot which will just force the correct context to be bound before it does any OpenGL calls at the beginning of every frame. So I'm assuming it's the plugin which is assuming after that editor window closes that um, it's assuming that the context is still bound. But I don't know, I'll have to look at that OpenGL trace and See what's going on. Uh, I guess I'll stop for lunch. <laughs> <laughs>